one. would die in this heat. Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Somewhere in a kingdom far, far away. Attention peasants and squanderers, now entering King Dutsen! For who is the fullest of shit in all of the lands? For it is the king with Mount Cardmore on a staff in his hand. <laughs> I spent entirely too much time doing this. This is, this is getting ridiculous, y'all. All right? I'm tired of being called the Dodson King. You know what the bad part is? I didn't have to buy a damn thing to turn myself into the Dodson King. I already have this because my wife knows. She knows. <laughs> that's a joke, but it's not a joke. She bought me that because... I always say I'm the king of the castle, so she thought it was funny. Mr. Harris Pepper sent us the old Dotson King shirt right here. And y'all know Mount Cardmore. She's been on a couple of the old Datsons uh, we've drug home there. I'm gonna call it a Dotson, a Datsun, a Dutson. I'm gonna call it anything to keep y'all off my back because 17,000 of y'all know a new pronunciation uh, every video, okay? Uh, but we got my old royal staff here. I'm not the Dotson King. I don't know nothing about Dotsons. I know a little bit, but not enough to, to wear this crown, okay? So don't don't get it twisted. I'm not the Dotson King. We've drug home three 620s, one 210, one 710, and all of a sudden I'm the Dotson King. Now as I try to convince y'all I'm not the Dotson King, uh, I hope y'all's ready to work on the Dotson today. <laughs> That's right. Some of y'all's gonna be excited. Some of y'all think I just do revivals and stuff. That ain't the case, all right? I like building stuff. I just start doing revivals to have fun. We've been having fun. As much fun as all that stuff is, there's been a lot of comments saying, you already see me build something. Uh, maybe do some fab work at Puddin's Fab Shop. <laughs> Should've called it Puddin's Revive and Drive. Puddin's, if it's a piece of shit, we'll buy it. Puddin's Junk Cars with Flat Tires. But I stayed true to my OG name, Puddin's Fab Shop. And some of y'all been wanting to know when we're going to do some fabric fabricating, get a little fabrication back in our lives. And it starts today on my old truck. We got to pull it in here. See what we're going to do with it. She needs an inspection. So please try to support the channel because I know views are going to fall off doing build stuff. And I hate that. So if you enjoy this, video with builds and stuff share it with friends family every everyone you know H help me keep the channel going because i'm trying to keep the channel growing so we got to keep the channel going step one is to get the old bob bed in here and if y'all ain't seen the bob bed let's go check it out here's blue 42 okay that's the one we just recently drug up out the old salvage and right here here we have the most noble dotson of all in all the land so we need to get the wheels and tires off old blue 42 and we need to get them put on our noble steed right here. Such a dumbass. <laughs> About killed myself. Not for that falling for me choking from laughing. Oh. Uh, maybe instead of trying to pose to look cool, I was trying to show y'all how good that truck rolls by itself. Apparently it turns well by itself too. So we may just took the little bob bed off the jack stands, at least the front ones. Oh, y'all's thinking dummy and y'all's all upset, but I'm not upset. We didn't hurt nothing, hell. All we did was give her a couple little scrapes right there, just enough to knock her off the front stands. Don't worry. She's just how we was before we gave her a smacky smack with another Dotson. If taking two Dotson and playing bumper carts and not giving a damn don't prove that I'm the, the, the fake Dotson King, I'm not the real one, I don't know what does. Because I know some Dotson people are upset right now. 
And look, it's okay. It's still here. It's a pretty solid tailgate. You don't have a Torola with a push tire on the front, you need to get one of those. And depending on how far we go on this thing, has to do with what all we find on our inspection. Because I built this thing like 12, 13 years ago when I was young. I think I started on it 17, 18, okay? It, this, is, this is the truck I taught myself everything on. This was me learning to cut weld fabricate right here. I'm gonna have my buddy Dale give her the once over so we can see, you know, what all we really need to fix. Hi, I'm Dale, Dale's Inspection Services, all that and more LLC located right here in Pot County, Oklahoma. Now, we have a bid today to do the old inspection on this here Datsun. Let's get started. First, we're gonna look at quality. Well, 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 looky here. I ain't seen a booger that big since I blew my nose this morning. Negative three, safety. Well, 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 what in the not full welded do we have going on here? I went to the Grand Canyon and seen a smaller gap than that. Safety, negative seven. Most importantly, he probably thought it was cool when he was 18. Built it all himself. Sweet little custom air management manifold. Wrote not perfect on the back of the notch like somebody didn't realize that as soon as they looked at it. Bob the bed, spray painted it about 19,000 colors. Proudly represented his car club. Sweet swap meat mirror. Custom little buckets. King cab center console with a custom tall shifter. Had his old logos on the door. I even heard he had built a shift knob that aimed right at your jugular when it was in second gear. He sure did. Plenty of Mexican blankets that done fell off everything. That one's a positive 120. Even with a score of 110, Idell state this truck needs some improvements based on safety and quality alone. You gotta be freaking kidding me. All right, I've been knowing that Dell for a while. Well, I ain't been knowing him. My cousin's been knowing him, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and he still failed us based off quality and safety. So it looks like we need to fix the back of the frame. We don't even want to look at the front. I, I knew it was going to fail. That's why I was hoping Dale didn't look up there, okay? But it's looking like we need a new back half on this thing. And I know some of y'all are thinking, hell, just build a whole new chassis. It's lucky it's getting this, okay? What I wanted to do was just say, screw it, put air ride stuff back on it, fix the fuel lines, brake lines, build a bed floor, and just run it, because this is the truck I built when I was 18. But due to liability of putting a dangerous ride on the street, I think we need to uh I think we need to update it a little bit and it'll let us do a little fabrication so we can get going on this, alright? She's gonna be the hottest new sensation. <laughs> She's gonna be something. She's gonna be something when we get done anyhow. I think the only thing we really have hooked up to the bed is this rubber fuel hose that, by the way, ran all the way from the tank to the carburetor. <laughs> Lucky I never burnt this son of a buck down. So I'm sure we got probably two bolts at the back and maybe just two at the front. And the old bob bed will come right off. Lock washers or lock nuts are overrated. Front sounds like it's barely holding on anyhow. about cut my damn arm off in that old glory hole right there. Glory hole not so glorious. Boy, this thing had to look like a damn piece of paper in the wind going down the road, didn't it? No one ever told me. <laughs> These did not have torque on them. Rust was what was holding them. And they weren't very tight, probably because they're son of a bitch to get to. Get this baby on some skates and move it over here to the crane. Some 12 year old gas. Y'all ready for another segment of Will It Burn? Not hardly. Boy, I bought this new toe strap for the toe roll and I ain't used it since. Let's see what we can rig up here.
Well, this is why you don't get rid of your bed hooks. You can't cut your bed hooks off, but I can bob 26 inches out the back of this one. <laughs> Old trusty here is a little worn out, but I think she'll get it done for us. Hey, there's the rest of that gas. Maybe we may want to plug that. Plug her with a bolt. Tape her up with duct tape. I forgot about our wiring, go figure. Holy missile wiring. I just found the world's most overpopulated ground bolt. That's it. We got her. Block that baby just right with that board and you're good to go. Woo-wee! There's the real inspection time. Holy cannoli. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Y'all know good and well I ain't embarrassed. Yeah. Tied us a rope across the top of our kind of Amish airbag mount there and down to the bottom one where I can jack up on this side. And I've got the frame level across the bag mounts. Just looking at this, I could tell it's unlevel. I've just, I want to put an angle finder on this stuff and see. <laughs> Notch about two and a half degrees off. Not this one, it's level. <laughs> just a degree and a half. Old cross member. You can see some of the beautiful wiring I had done. Okay. Uh, there's that ground I just had to cut. I don't know what all I had to ground for, but yeah, it looks like maybe some stuff was getting hot. Maybe, possibly. Make sure to run that in zip ties with your rubber fuel hose. That way you can burn it down. And hey, there's a nut missing right there. I drug the bottom of the frame, so I added plates at one point, and you can see how well that was going. So it ain't hard to see uh, why I wanted to just cut the back off this thing. Now, as much as I'd love to leave this truck as is, because it was my first truck, if I'm gonna drive it on the road, I want it to be safe. Not just for me, but for others. Uh, the only thing worth saving back here that I can tell so far is the factory wiring. Looks like I never cut on it. Uh, it still has the connects for the factory. Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's got all the factory stuff on it. Still good. Am I embarrassed about this? Not at all. Guys, I built this when I was 18. I think grand total into getting this truck, doing air ride, putting the tires on it, getting it running, I think I had $1,100 into it. This is the truck that gave me the confidence to do what I do today when I build a chassis for my truck or all the stuff we've done like on the travel and whatnot. It's because I'm not scared to jump in and do it from this truck. Now, is this some work I'd be proud of today? Well, hell no, okay? Honestly, I didn't even know how bad I'd done until just now. <laughs> Pretty bad. I never broke, never left us stranded, never killed anybody, luckily. So, the main thing we need to get is a measurement for where to put our axle back to, some type of reference off the front, and pull this wiring, drive shaft, and decide where we're gonna slice and dice it up behind the cab. There we go, she just needed a little motivation. Oh, my hat job. Boy, zip tie could have sponsored me. Well, I think it's safe to say we need to build some new brake lines anyhow, so let's just give that a slice and dice. Remember the wiring I mentioned? That was in decent shape? Well, don't worry. Right up there off the frame rail, the, the rat was nice enough to care, take care of all that for me. Like, I can't even find, this was hanging there, but the rest of it's completely gone. Like, it ain't all of it. I have some painful poo-poos. See, because we got a custom carrier bearing, we can just get in there and slide that two-piece right out, no problem. Next, we're going to take some measurements, and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not going to be super picky here. 46 and 3 sixteenths. I'm going from the back of the cab to the center of the axle tube. Uh, just where this fits right up here, we're going to measure both sides. 
I like to draw a spot where I put the tape measure. It just helps me remember. Now, if you don't want to draw on your cab, if you care about your cab, uh, you can put a piece of tape there, then draw it. 46, so we're off square. We're off side to side a quarter inch. Not that that matters, I was just curious. Next, we'll pull the Amish air bag where we can sit this thing on the ground. So a couple things here. One, pinion angles are overrated. Two, I did just measure the axle again when this thing dropped down all the way here in the back. Now this truck always had it slammed. It was always aired out, always drove everywhere slammed. From what I remember, the wheel looked pretty good in the wheel well. Now, we've got a pretty big bed gap on this thing, so we've got a good quarter inch of play. I think, even though the rear end's in there crooked, I think I've got a number that I wanna do, which is gonna be 45 and three quarter. I guess it's time to decide where we wanna cut this thing, because I'm tired of looking at all this ugly crap. Let's pull these bolts for our lower link bars and just ride off. Let's just cut it off right at the back and just get all this out of here. What we got, Pop? Special delivery? Special delivery from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Model it, Pops. Hey, you're big enough for me. If you're wanting a t-shirt, they're off the website right now in probably a month or so. We're going to open it back up for more pre-orders. Got more designs coming, so appreciate y'all support with the merchandise. Let's get our first rough cut done. What do y'all say? I say it helps if you turn on the plasma cutter. So as much as I want to blow those sparks up, I'm not going to do that. Does it make you sad to see it cut in half, Dad? No, not really. <laughs> Does it make you feel safer knowing it won't be on the road again? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there it went. There it went. That's better. Give her a smack. Well, that, uh, that went fairly easy, I'd say. I could have been the mayor of Sketch City. Would y'all look at that? Holy Gaposaurus. Holy no weld at all. Uh, honestly, I still don't think this thing would have ever bro broke. I almost said braked. Uh, um, ever broke. It was pretty solid to even cut through and have to smack her off there. But I think we're doing pretty good by getting rid of all that. We'll be back on this thing tomorrow. Uh, me and... The family got to run to Dallas real quick and pick up KK from the airport. So be back on this thing tomorrow. Finish cleaning up where we're going to end up tying in our new uh, back half. Woo! It is hotter than old windy peppercorn out here. Damn it. Nothing like getting started midday. We're going to pick up where we left off. We need to cut off these skid plates off the bottom, which we should be able to do with a grinder. And then we're going to come in. We're gonna grind off all this old crap, so we need to get locked and loaded. We're cutting, I prefer the little seven amp. We're doing some grinding, I prefer the old 11 amp. Sometimes you need to go mobile, and sometimes you buy a big ass grinder and you don't know what to do with it, so you put a shrinking disc on it. Y'all on? There's one down. I mentioned it's hot today. That was a lot of grinding. I didn't figure y'all gonna watch that, all right? Uh, cleaned it up, put the wire wheel on, knocked a lot of the crud and crap off. Everything looks good. Uh, next, I wanna get this 50, 50 pound pile of excuse for doing this out of the way. And then, uh, 
I think we need to measure off our bed mounted cab, mark us the area to clean cut these off. 20 and 3 16 20 and 3 16 Come out here about 14 inches. 22 and 3 quarter. Twenty-two and three quarter. Put all the algebra equations and algorithms to the side, and basically what I'm telling you is we're square enough to mark it there and cut it. I think we're gonna have to cut our bed mounts about right in there. Do some grinding on the outside. Maybe we'll tack up something across them. I don't think we'll lose our position. Let me cut those off, and then I'm gonna cut off these frame rails. You, you'll see what I'm cooking up here in a minute. What, it, what I'm trying to do is get this to tie in where I've grinded and welded all that crap. That way this area gets fish plated for maximum strength. Before we get too carried away, tacking cross members and whatnot, we really need to level this thing, all right? But I just thought of something. We got like a little Wheel Hop Wilma Jr. right here. <laughs> Y'all don't know who Wheel Hop Wilma is? Here's the real wheel hop Wilma right here. And we will build this one day when I can afford a Cummins and a five speed and some semi wheels and a lift. And then when I got a shop big enough to put the lift in, yeah, a lot of y'all want to know why we're not building it. There's your reasons right there. It's gonna be pricey. Don't tempt me with making this thing front wheel drive and putting some casters on the back. You can do chassis work on uneven broken concrete. You just gotta have patience and angle finder. First, we're gonna start with getting the front on jack stands because we don't want any variables like tires going flat or someone walking in, hey pudding, how's it going? With it on rollers and they shove it across, oops. You know, we don't want nothing like that going on. So we're gonna get the front on jack stands then we're gonna go to the back and we are gonna start angle finding till we can't angle find no more. Sorry, I didn't mean Level, level enough. Just playing, we're sitting on zero right there. So that's a start for our front to back. Lift the low on this side, so we're gonna favor our jack to that side. Right in there. Just an inch over this side. Good, good concrete around here. So you keep a lot of blocks. Nice and level. Off the frame rails we read nice and level. Both sides. Front to back we're nice and level. Both sides. Front cross members nice and level. We are not touching right there so we need to support that with something. We don't need to pick it up, we need to support it. Piece of quarter inch plate on this one. I did not pick this up with a jack. I was able to push up just enough to slide that puppy in there. Front frame is pretty damn level too. About one inch thick aluminum block back here. So as long as no one moves that, and listen, I know that ain't the most secure, but we ain't gonna use the damn thing as a trampoline, all right? It's not like we're gonna get it hopping like that blue Dotson with a gooseneck. As long as you don't beat on that puppy, she should be good right there. So now we can finally look at cutting the bed mounts and I'm gonna cut the chassis out. dirty frame rail if I've ever seen one. That's what inside a Dotson frame rail looks like if you're ever curious, right at the old pinch point. That's right here. Let's see what's hidden frame rail number two. Oh yeah, some, some more good crunchies, huh? Damn, 530 already. But, guys, that that right there is the stuff that takes a lot of work, just grinding off all that old stuff, spending the time to look down there, see how you can uh, do a little tie-in with the new frame, how you want to do it. I mean, making the decisions, making the prep, and making the cuts, all that stuff is time-consuming. 
Now that we're kind of ready to add a piece in and whoop, start headed towards the back, we're going to be smooth sailing. Back on this baby. All right, we're ready to design us some frame rails. So let's take a quick look at the old sketch pad. I determined from the back of the cab to the center of the axle, we're gonna go for 45 and three quarter. Here's our sweet cab if you can't tell by the bullet side. Now the nub of our frame is hanging out four and three quarter from the back of the cab. So from that cut there where we're gonna tie in from there back, 41 inches is what we need to be at the center. I know a lot of times uh, you'll just see a frame rail run flat and then when it gets to the notch it kicks up or whatever. For some reason or another, right behind the cab, I, I like to start to do a slow swoop all the way up. So we're kind of going for something this this design. We got some, some figuring to do, but that's the, that's the rough sketch. That little lip right there just about tricked me. A minute ago I measured from there to there, four and three quarter. When I measured before, my mark is up on here. So I need to include that lip off the back of the cab which puts that at five and a half. So when I put four and three quarter right there, it really should have been five and a half. That's a nice save right there. Let me show you what we got going on. Here's the back of our cab. There's that lip right there. Now from that lip out to here, that measurement is still four and three quarter. That's where we're gonna have to tie in. We're treating that as a nice flat ground. From the very back of the cab to the center of the axle, we're at four and three quarter. That's what we got right here. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? We're at four and three quarter. That's what we got right here. Next thing we need to determine is how high the axle is going to be. And once we mark it, then we can start to play connect the dots in between there and figure out how we want our frame rail to look good, if that makes sense. For some of you guys who are running 37 inch billets with negative 14 plus a positive 18 lip, okay, this may be a little funky for y'all. Here's why it's easy for me. Cause this is the wheels and tires I'm running. I don't care if it can lay out on 49s, all right? So with this wheel and tire already on here, we can measure right there. 14 inches is more than enough. We may go to 15 just, just because. And 15 inches is there, and we do four inch tubing right there. We're still gonna gain an additional three inches of clearance because I'm not building C notches that come up to damn Pikes Peak, okay? So we're gonna have more of a notch, more clearance, no bike speak. Sounds like a winning combo to me, folks. I said 15. We're gonna do four inch square tubing. Reds are frame we're building. Right here. Where we're tying in, we're gonna go ahead and color it red because it is gonna be part of our new frame rail. So there's all the old stuff. To connect these dots, we need to decide two things. One, how wide do we want the top of our notch? And two, how far do we wanna come be uh, behind where we cut this original frame off before we start kicking up? Without overcomplicating it, just what kind of looks good to me real quick, we're gonna do 12 inches. So six inches that away and six inches that away. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it is not gonna be a lot. I'm thinking maybe just four inches. Pay attention to where you crawl. You don't wanna erase your work. Four inches. At our mark six inches from the center, six inches from the center. Now we connect here to here. Measure that angle. And then back here, we've got to decide how much to drop down. And we need to see how far back we got to go because we got a pretty stubby frame, folks. From the axle to the very back, we're going about 17 inches. We can do that and trim down. We need to drop down with the top of the frame or the top of the mount being about eight inches. We don't want to go past that line. That is a pretty hard drop. Come back from there four inches. 
Now I lied to y'all over here because on the top I said I went over six and then six and that ain't right, all right? Because this, this top is gonna be a longer length so we shouldn't have done that. Now we still got our angles. Let me show you what you should do. So if we intersect our two bottom points, then we go off that line and we measure four inches because we know that's the width of our material. And then we draw the straight line. Then we're gonna have to extend this so it intersects. And same down here. Let me fix this real quick, cause I'm an idiot. Been playing with junk cars so long I done forgot how to fabricate. So here's the problem with our initial design. This 12 inches is too wide right here. And I say that because one, this is coming up, kind of kicking up higher than I want it. It's not so, not so streamlined looking, okay? So I know it don't seem like a lot, but taking one inch off each side is gonna kind of mellow that out. And then two, we can't be behind this. I said we need to probably trim up from there a little bit. So that's gonna go down and then boom, bed mount. And that ain't gonna work. So we need to, instead of this being 12 inches, I may knock this down to nine inches, which is gonna be coming off the center, doing four and a half this way, four and a half this way, and then repeating the whole process. So let's get that done and see how this looks. About halfway through a frame drawing is a good time to do a little hand cleaning. And if you're like me and you don't like having dirty hands, then you need to get these TKO hand wipes by Sweet Patina. Be sure to use that promo code on the screen. All you gotta do is head over to sweetpatina.com and these things are great, not just for cleaning your hands, but for cleaning your uh, crooked ass concrete as well. Hopefully y'all can see, all I did, like I said, nine inches instead of 12, and it really just kind of mellowed that out with the 12 inches, that was kind of kicking up hard. It gives us more room back here. You can see if we didn't have a goofy bob bed that some 18 year old dummy built, how that frame rail would kind of, whoo, just keep on sliding towards the back, you know? Good looking design right here, so. Now let's figure out our new angle. We're gonna need a new angle finder because even with this baby locked down, that thing can move quite a bit and that's how you end up with a crooked frame rail. I don't mind using a little trusty. We've been through a lot together. Now she ain't quite as long, but it's looking like we can get away with 25 degrees on this angle, all right? I guess we can get technical and call this what it is, which is 155 degrees. If you want that, just subtract your 25 from 180. These ones are 122 degrees. Last detail, picture this blue outline as a fish plate. So when we get all this done, we'll cut out some metal and we will find out a way to plate this whole damn thing for all the strengths. We'll be able to, we'll be able to turn this thing into a damn overpass bridge if we want. You'll be so damn strong. So we got the trailer picked up right here. Damn, that looks good. Future video, we're getting the winch on it. I want to figure out some type of toolbox. Uh, we need to add the trailer brake controller, some pin striping. She's going, she's going to look spiffy, but right now we got to get back to our frame action for the old Datsun. Piece one, piece two, piece three, piece four, piece five. Gotta love how dirty this crap gets. Now for our first angle over there, I wrote 155. I just cut a sample piece and I think we're gonna change it to 154. Let me show y'all how this works. It's super simple math. You divide 154 by two, you're gonna get my lucky number right there. It's 77, all right? Take our angle finder and set it to 77. Cut that baby, flip flop it. Quick little tape job. I actually like that fitting better than when I did the 155, so we'll change this to 154. Seems to be fitting pretty damn good. 
Now you can keep your piece of paper because after you start cutting enough of these, you're gonna start getting confused hold on which way's up and which way's down and what's forward and what's aft and everything else. So with this one, you get confused, all you gotta do is go, hey, I want this to kick up. Oh, okay, I see which way I need to mark. Makes it easy peasy. This thing is three and three quarter, which fits exactly inside these rolled edges where I've got me a quick little tracer marker angle guide. A few pieces of masking tape makes it easy to go around these corners because the rounded corners can be a pain in the butt to say the least. Squared across the top, use our little guide here, wrap that corner, match it up. We're matching at the bottom. If we split our diagonal at the halfway mark, measure there. We got eight and five sixteenths. If we check the other side, we have eight and five sixteenths. So you know we have this thing nice and symmetrical. I'm actually gonna cut this with a cutoff wheel and that's it guys. It's a long process, but if you don't got a good straight frame, you end up with the shit like what we started with. Super high tech stuff. Cardboard and $59 grinders. There's piece one of 10. While a good idea, sometimes plans change. Instead of starting to trim this up to fit tight to this, well that tubing will slide right up in this whole damn thing. It'd be way stronger just sliding a piece of tubing in there. We need to cut a new piece. About like so. Let's see how this one's gonna work for us. One damn little tablet's really giving us a fit here. And this is from the old pinch portion. So we can lose this piece and she'll fit real good. We just saved us a headache right there. With that tab out of there, we can go flush with the bottom. Look at that. And that's what we got to do all the way to the damn back now. And that's a lot of cutting, guys. One, we got to have two of each one. So I need to cut another one of those. But then we got to cut part two, three, four, and five over here. Part three and four. All we're going to do is divide that 122 by two again. That'll give us 61 on our angles here. And you just take your time, mark the stuff. Be sure to cut as, as best. Have your A-game on, okay? Be in the zone and not AutoZone. That place sucks. Just playing AutoZone if y'all want to sponsor me or something. Let me get these knocked out because y'all don't want to watch me do eight of these. Y'all be asleep by the time I get done. Y'all clicked unsubscribe and been off this damn channel. Y'all may hit a thumbs down. Bunch of hateful comments. You know good and well we don't want to watch you cut 19 pieces. I'm hoping we got enough material. Hot damn hallelujah. Should be our last piece. Unless we cut stuff wrong, that's a possibility. As you cut one side, you can take that piece and put it on the next piece you're gonna cut, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, match stuff up. We still got a lot of work right here, folks. We gotta do a lot of beveling. We gotta do a lot of fitting up, jigging up, welding up, whatever. But that's our basic frame rail shape right there. Now, other than little stuff, I ain't really used this table since I've got it. Level. Level. I think we're good to go. Let's see if this little table's made of. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel all the edges. So I'm just kind of eyeballing about an eighth to three sixteenths back on each edge. Give her a little mark, and then old flapper disc 970 model right there. We're gonna give her a bevel. I have not built a frame since the frame of my truck, and that was the first frame I ever built this style, or ever, I guess, this style hell. Like, I've knocked out 17 styles of frames, and that was just that one that this, that, 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 that. I ain't done this in like four years, so I'm, I'm teaching myself as we go again, is what I was trying to say. Getting hot and sweaty out here, folks. Now, because I ain't perfect, I'm a little rusty and I ain't done this in a while, I'm sure I'm off a little bit here or there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna clamp down this first one. We're gonna tack it up. We're gonna check our angle, 154 degrees on the dot, baby. 
after we get these two pieces together, we're gonna move on to the next one. And as long as we keep overlaying these things and checking them, there's a little fine tuning to do on each end, then we can do the little fine tuning until we get them matching. 154, just beautiful. That being nice and flat is what matters. Everything is matching up pretty damn good, everyone. This one needs to be rebeveled because I, like I said, ground her down to match. But we're about to put a couple more tacks on this one. And I think those are going to be the hardest ones to kind of get situated, all right? So I think after this, we're going to be able to, yeah, we're going to rock. We're about to rock and roll is what I'm trying to tell you. This stuff is all fit up. It ain't the best, guys, but like I said, I'm a little rough at this, but it's all definitely weldable. I will grind out some of these bigger tacks. That way our weld sits nice and, and flat. And yeah, it's a lot of welding. It's time to start welding. Tell you one thing, these things are freaking heavy. Y'all wanna know why I started doing well at runs? One, I just spent $3,000 in metal. All I got was like 20 foot of quarter inch thick two by four. And two, I've been working my ass off today. All day, all day. This is what we got done. We drew a sketch, we picked up my trailer, we got the pieces cut, beveled, welded together. Working my ass off. I ain't got an ass left. Probably just looks like I got leg extensions. We just took a a chalk drawing and turn it into reality right here. Some nice looking frame rails. Now, if you're worried about me full welding these things, should have mocked up some stuff, should have whatever. I I don't get worried about that kind of stuff, guys. Uh, got it how I want it, weld it up. We'll build the rest of this. It'll turn out good. We'll be back on it in the morning. We're gonna try to clamp, brace, weld. Yeah, back in the morning. This morning we're going to show the old crooked concrete who's boss, all right. I done took the flapper and cleaned up all this and all this where it's ready to weld. Uh, one C clamp and that jack stand. This side is dead nuts sitting on zero, so we're probably going to have to shim this side after. Yeah, let's see if we get as lucky on this side. We got crooked concrete. Angle finder's our best friend. Pretty close right there. Piece of cardboard just made the, the little bit we needed right there. Level and level. Guys, I just measured back from the body mounts to like three different reference points. My frame rails were a quarter inch off, so what I did was I scooped this one back an eighth inch, okay, to make up an eighth, and then this one over here, I took the old slicer dicer 750, and I took about an eighth inch out there and slid it forward. Now I checked about three or four spots down the frame rails and we're matching on both sides. Both frame rails are level front to back. We're not level side to side, but before we go start leveling them up here at the front, I want to put one tack each. That is not what I plan to do. <laughs> We're sitting level both ways, so now we gotta start squaring. Inside to inside, 35 and 5 16 35 and 9 16 So we're too wide at the back, so as we bring these in, we need to go to a center point up there and do some cross measuring. That way we get her square too. I think this side's pretty straight. I think most of it's in this one. After moving all this stuff across the front, 35 and 3 16 come across here on the back, 35 and 3 16 Take little tape measure here. We do some cross measuring. 61 and 3 16 61 and 3 16 Guys, that's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Um, angle finder, as long as we're level here on the tops, 
and to the sides, which we should be. Interrupt my video again. I'll put your ass in cuffs. Uh, we'll be good to go. Sorry. And zero. Guys, I think we are finally good. As you see, installed some cross members down through here. And these things have been used several times, right? Nothing special. But I hope I'm good because I just locked in the front. And by what I mean by that is I just sent a wheel down across the top. Huh? So check it out. We just uh, tied in some frame rails on this crooked ass concrete. Who would have thunk it? Now I'm going to go around, take my time welding, kind of weld up where it ties in. We'll look at fish, fish plating that area. Made us a template, nothing fancy, cardboard. We're doing our same angle, all right? You know I like to put a radius, okay? Radius looks way better than a straight line. And we're going to end up with something like that right there. Now you see why I put a straight line right there. Cut two of these. Fits that side good. Then we're going to take this piece. We're going to tape it on the end here. And we're going to have our uh, fish plate for the inside. <laughs> New Hypertherm for men. Hypertherm 45, love that damn thing. Wish I was better at using it, but practice makes perfect. I never practice. Just like any, any skill or any trade, you don't use it, you lose it. There we go. Got all four done. Uh, next, we're gonna be slapping these babies up there. It's a lot of grinding, guys. Then figure y'all wanted to watch all that. Y'all think about that sweet old potato cup. Delicious cocktail of Pedialyte, water, and ice. Let's go fit these babies. Hey, who? Hey, ho, ha, ha. Hey, those might be hot. Maybe we'll put some gloves on for this. Just maybe. There's one. Kind of see how those fit up there. There's a little bit of gap to weld, but nothing ridiculous considering how much that frame kind of changes. I'm gonna fit up the outside ones, then I'm gonna weld them up. In between welding them up, we're gonna take little breaks to give the welder a break, to let that cool down, give it a break. Hell, maybe I wanna take a break every once in a while. Full welded up. Damn, that was hot. Wind coming through here, want to take my gas. I had to close down the shop. See where it tried to take my gas once right there, but everything uh, turned out pretty good. Got all of them 100% welded up. Pretty happy with it. At first, I was thinking we may cap the top with something, but I'll be honest, guys, I don't think that's very necessary. Uh, next, what I like to do after doing my fish plates is I like to actually fish plate the fish plate. Just right where the joint is, I like to do a diamond shape. We'll do it out a half inch. <laughs> but y'all think I'm serious? Come on. That's already half inch thick on each side, quarter inch on quarter inch. I think we're plenty strong, folks. What we're really gonna do next is we're gonna look at fixing those bed mounts, because if you remember, we had a slice and dice to cut out the whole frame. Because it's corners rounded, I think I'm just gonna cut this straight off where a flat piece can go here. <laughs> I guess Shaky Joe here should maybe eat. That way I can get the shakes. Or get rid of the shakes, I mean. Damn, look at that. I could have freaking pull started a damn beaver and cut it straighter than what I just did with that plasma. Hell. Luckily, old Shaky Joe uh, could still run the grinder here. Let's go get these babies uh, tacked on. That's it for today. Uh, we've been getting some shirts out, so if you uh, participated in the pre-order, I actually had some come in ahead of schedule, so Mama's been getting them sent out with the help of the kiddos. So if you get a shirt early, uh, that's what you get for being the early bird who ordered early. If you didn't order early, they're like guessing like August 20th for the production of the rest of them. 
So thank you to the family for taking care of merchandise, except I just got an email saying I got the wrong, someone got the wrong size, so they're about to get fired. Well, good morning. I'm glad y'all decided to finally get up. Now, when y'all were sleeping, I was out here getting stuff done. Uh, first thing, the bed mounts. Did the front side like the back side, so now it kind of looks like we fabricated that whole mount, even though all we did was a little manipulation on the whole situation. And I'm pretty happy with how those turned out. Quarter inch, quarter inch. Should be nice and strong. Of course, both sides match. Come on. Middle doing them ran out of welding wire and gas, so I had to go to my local supply when I was waiting for them to open up. Stripped all this old stuff apart. We may reuse the four link if we get some new bushings. After I got it apart, I cut this piece out of the back of the floor, and that's where my uh, gas tank used to sit right there. And it's also where the bed mounts were, which is why the ass end of this thing was sagging, because, well, she was barely hanging on. And I just tacked this in a two by three cross member here in the rear. That's quarter inch thick. So this thing is beefcake supreme with extra sauce. But I want to get the bed kind of figured out because I think this back area is going to be a little tight. Working by yourself in the shop a lot, you got to get creative. Now I don't mean bell and wire your license plate to your truck creative either. I mean, hey, looky there, I can use the office chair to move this bed by myself creative. some super scientific stuff i'm telling you guys this is super scientific stuff up here we're gonna go with the four link day cross member very rare and hard to find and then down here we got the strap de ratchia mechanic device also very hard to find and together the two or the ultimate science secret. This stuff is so rare, the myth, Mythbusters couldn't even get it, guys. Get the front two bolts in, set her level, and build some rear mounts. Well, it's Grease Lightning! <laughs> Quit shaking. That's one. That's two. That's better. Yeah, maybe not that bit close a gap. Pretty good right there. We are pretty damn level. I mean, it may be a quarter of a frog hair, but that's about it. Who would have thunk it, guys? You build everything level, you put two mounts in, and you pick a bed straight up, it should be level. Magic. 83, 9 sixteenths. 83 and 5 eighths. So, a sixteenth out of square with no more than I did. Just a sixteenth. Uh, guys, that, that's enough where after you drill your holes, you give it a little bump this way or that way before you tighten it down. That means we're basically money, is what I'm telling you. Let's decide how we want to build some mounts. Personally, I can't think of a better place to put a mount than right here. Perfect. I think we're done, guys. That's pretty much it. Could you guys imagine I do all this damn work and then mount the bed like that? <laughs> We need to pick up a hair, but that's okay. We can do that when we build it. Look how much easier that just got to build, be able to build, access, access to build. Y'all need to send help right now, and I wish I was playing. I'm married to a crazy woman. She is making them kids get false stuff out right now, people. It's a thousand degrees out. She wants to put pumpkins on her kitchen table. That's right. I'm telling all of YouTube, you're freaking crazy. I love the Pumpkins would die in this heat. 
she's nuttier and squirrel shit. Uh, check it out. The rest of that bed just had a bed. This is a whole bed. The rest of that bed floor just had a few spot welds uh, in the bottom of those, so I ground those off. Welded in a piece of one by one, so we're nice and solid. The only issue is, I'm plumb out of time, guys. If I'm gonna get this video edited and out to y'all, I gotta get on it. So I'm about to uh, rig this rear end, just tacked up underneath here where we can move it. Bam, boom, bang, there we go. First of all, let me point out, look how good that wheel fits in the uh, wheel well. Now, I didn't, even, I didn't use a tape measure or nothing, guys. All I did was tack a piece of one by one from our old mount to the about what looked like center of our notch just so we could get it where we could move it around. Unfortunately, that's as far as we're gonna be able to make it today on this thing. Cause I still, it, it's mid Sunday and I got a ton of editing to do to have this posted tomorrow. So hot damn, that's it folks. That's a lot of work to knock out a back half chassis in a couple days like that. Especially guys, I know I use my plasma cutter, but I'll tell you this, the chassis of my truck, all I had was a grinder and I fish plated every joint, okay, on it. Not like this one. All right, so you can do this stuff with two really simple tools. Actually, it takes three. Grinder, welder, motivation. You gotta want it. You don't want it, it ain't gonna get done. Now, if you want it, you'll get her dead. It helps when you have stuff like a plasma, but you gotta start somewhere. And you can do it on crooked concrete. Trust your angle finder, trust your cross measuring, and if it ain't square, don't weld it. Don't get frustrated. Sometimes you just gotta take a step back. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you did watch. I used to do a lot of fab work and I took a break from it for a while. That being said, we're not just continuing working on this thing next week. I got some more junk cars I wanna go look at. What I wanna do guys is get all the stuff I've been doing and start mixing in some of my personal build stuff with it. And I ain't got enough time to just do entertainment, do fab, work full time, have family. So I gotta trickle it in with you guys. So please uh, let me know what you think. If you're on the Instagrammer, I'm on there, Footage Fab Shop, and I will see you guys next time. And I can't wait till I don't live next to this loud ass road. Don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I couldn't think of nothing witty to say after that. I'm whooped. Such a dumbass.